Hey guys, Kildare here, and I've been away for over a week and missed out on some news, but I thought I'd do a video on the topic anyway. Even though it's a week late. Better late than never, I guess. So anyway, there's been some mixed opinions on this new Founders Pack option, which has risen mainly negative. If you don't know what it is, then I'll do a quick summary. Essentially, you pay $40 and you get access to the Heroes of the Storm beta and some heroes, skins, and exclusive mount. So, if you're like me, you're probably thinking, what's with all the controversy? And to be honest, it's essentially ignorance at its finest. So I get into the major accusation out of the way first, which is people saying it's a cash grab. Now, if you step back for a minute and use, say, math, you can clearly see that the patron is getting a good deal. So, let's do the math, shall we? Listing off the prices of the individual items, we have Raynor at $4, Diablo at $7.50, Tyrande at $7.50, Commander Raynor skin at $7.50, Lurkablo skin at $10, Blood Elf Tyrande at $7.50, Golden Cyberwolf, which is exclusive to this pack, so I'll be listing its value as the regular Cyberwolf at $10. Uh, 2,500 gold, which you cannot buy, but equates to roughly $4.50. And beta access, which I can't put a price on, so we'll be listing it as free. Total cost individually equates to $58.50, which makes a $18.50 saving. In other words, having this bundle in the game without the beta access would still be a saving for the patron. However, if you look at it this way, you pretty much get the beta access free. So thanks to simple math, we debunk one element of the cash grab argument. Next up is my own personal definition of a cash grab in the gaming industry, which what I think means is selling a game or DLC for a vastly higher price than what it is worth and hindering your gameplay experience if you do not buy said DLC. Or in other words, they take your money and run, giving you an unfinished product, must buy DLC, or must buy microtransaction to advance in the basic game. The reason why this does not apply to Heroes of the Storm is because any microtransactions in Heroes of the Storm are purely cosmetic. Granted, you can buy heroes with money, but you can also buy them with in-game currency, which is earned. This differs from, say, a racing game where you must buy fuel for your car to participate in races with real cash. This hinders you immediately due to you not being able to play the game until you make the purchase of fuel. Another example is most mobile games run off microtransactions, both cosmetic and hindering your gameplay. Most common example given is you have a limited number of game overs per day. Once you reach the limit, you may buy more lives for your game to continue playing it or don't play and have to wait the next day. Like I said before, microtransactions are mostly cosmetic in Heroes of the Storm, just like in League of Legends or in Dota 2. But I'm sure the argument still remains that nonetheless you must pay $40 in order to even play Heroes of the Storm if you weren't invited. In this case, let's flip my previous argument around. Say that yes, you do pay $40 to get into Heroes of the Storm beta. You then get the benefits of the Founders Pack for free, which is $58.50, so you are still making a saving nonetheless. Also, in case anyone who is angry about paying money for a game forgot, there's a profit to be had. All the people in the credits roll don't live off charity. It also boils down to who's making these stupid accusations and ignorant comments. To put it simply, if you really badly want to play Heroes of the Storm, you would pay the $40 in a heartbeat and enjoy the game. No complaints, just overjoyed to be even playing the game. Which now leads to the people I think are making the stupid comments. Essentially, these people just want to test out the game and know little about it or wish to compare it to League of Legends or Dota. On the other hand, they could be very hypocritical, bitch about the price and buy the game anyway, or alternatively, they don't actually want Heroes of the Storm, they just want content from Blizzard doesn't matter what it is, they just want something new, fun, fast, free, and it's not exactly what they want, they'll hit up the internet and tell Blizz how shit they are. To summarize, if you bitch and moan about paying $40 for a good game in beta, then don't pay and don't cry to the internet or Blizzard that you can't fish out the money out of your parents' wallets. I understand that there is a stereotype coming along, particularly in Steam beta access games. The developers are making scams of early access unfinished beta games and running once people buy. But what I would also like people to understand is that this game was made by Blizzard, not a random name or freelance game designer. Blizzard has a reputation to hold and is known for making good games. Either wait until it's finished or go play League of Legends, Dota, Smite, or AFK in WoW. Oh, and lastly, as a final comment, haters are gonna hate. No matter what Blizzard does, someone somewhere will take it the wrong way and the warrior will reach for his keyboard and cry away. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that this is an unfinished product. It is beta, so yes, it will be fun, but expect a fair share of bugs, glitches, hero and map imbalances. So in the end, it all boils down to, is it worth it? Should you pay $40 to get into Heroes of the Storm beta? Well, the answer is in the eye of the holder. It all comes down to you, and for me, it is a certain yes. If it was my chance to get into the beta, I would do it straight away and be very overjoyed. If you are happy playing other MOBAs, like League of Legends, and don't have a problem with it, then probably not. Like transitioning from one game to another, no matter how similar, you still have to climb the learning curve. If you are simply curious, then it would probably not be worth your while either. Also, if you want to compare it to other MOBAs, then I would also not suggest you buying Heroes of the Storm, considering it is still in beta and unfinished. However, if you are a Blizzard fan like me, and love PvP, MOBAs, and Blizzard games, and want all that mashed together with a few bugs here and there, then go for it. Heroes of the Storm was fun for me since day one, and it still is. Blizzard is known for making high quality games, and I think Heroes of the Storm is no exception. Of course, this whole debate is purely based on personal preference. There is no right or wrong answer, everyone will just have to decide for themselves. Well guys, I hope this made this decision easy for you. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.